estrogen is different functionally from progesterone. Testosterone is different functionally from estrogen. But from a chemistry structure standpoint, they're basically the same. And when you shut down your production of cholesterol artificially from a, by taking a poison drug, you're shutting down the production of all these super duper important hormones. And by the way, when the body needs more cortisol because it's under stress, or when the body needs more testosterone because it's repairing, or when the body needs more progesterone because it needs to relax or, or perhaps make a baby, guess what it's going to do? It's going to upregulate cholesterol. You're going to make more cholesterol when you're under stress. You're going to make more cholesterol when you need to heal. You're going to make more cholesterol when you need to build. You're going to make more cholesterol post-surgery. You're going to make more cholesterol if you're exercising. In fact, you're going to make more cholesterol any time the body thinks it needs to be building. And this, friends, this is the real problem with elevated levels of cholesterol. We have tricked the body into thinking it's in building mode, but we're not building. We have tricked the body through our food choices into thinking that it's supposed to be building, but we're not doing anything to make it build. We're not working out. We're not exercising. We're not doing resistance training. We're not walking. We're not doing physical exercise that is associated with building, but at the same time, we're sending the body signals that it should be building. That's called mixed messages. The chemical message that the body gets through our food choices is, oh, it's time to build. The chemical messages that the body gets through our lifestyle choices, our exercise choices is, oh, it's time to store. It's time to, to store energy. We don't need to be building. We don't need to be using energy. And these mixed messages are what account for number one, obesity and blood sugar problems, and number two, elevated cholesterol. And what is it that sends the body messages that it should be building when we're not building? It's called sugar. And this is the connection between sugar and cholesterol. And this is the reason why we're dealing with issues of hypercholesterol. We have sent the body signals through our intake of sugar through our uh, elevated insulin, that it should be in building mode, but we're not building because we're not exercising. We're not stimulating the building process. The chemistry says building, but our lifestyle says not building. So the cholesterol levels build up and the energy gets stored. If you want to drop your cholesterol, reduce your sugar intake, period, end of story. And tell that to the next boneheaded medical professional who tries to put you on a statin drug. And any diabetic will tell you that blood sugar and elevated cholesterol go hand in hand. You drop your sugar, your cholesterol, low, your cholesterol drops, your weight drops, your blood pressure drops, and you live longer too, without a statin drug, without toxing your body, without a cardiologist, without a doctor, without the medical model, period. So elevated blood sugar and elevated insulin signal the body that should be building. These upregulate the production, the synthesis of cholesterol. And this is especially important as we get older. As we get older, our adrenal glands are supposed to make more and more of our steroid hormones. When we're younger, our gonads, our testes, and our ovaries are making our steroid hormones. But as we get older, the adrenal glands pick up the slack. But if our adrenal glands are off making stress hormones, they're not going to be making sex hormones. This is super duper important if you're interested in anti-aging. All right. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls, 844-236-6010. I'll take a couple letters here as well. All right, we're back on the bright side, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Tomorrow we'll talk more about the adrenal glands and stress hormones, and we'll talk about this link between all the good stuff, the fertility hormones, and the youth hormones, the repair hormones, the anti-aging hormones, the anti-wrinkle hormones, the skin health hormones, the good stuff, and the relationship between the stress hormones. Basically, if you're out making stress hormones, you're not making the good stuff. And that's so, so important to understand because it underscores the relationship between stress and disease and calming the body down. This is so critical to understand because your doctor's not going to tell you this. And it's not his fault, by the way. As much as I rip into the medical model, it's not their fault. That's not their job. That's our job. Good health is as simple as correcting digestive health issues, stabilizing the blood sugar, and calming the body down. Now, I've been getting all kinds of letters from on the uh, website, criticalhealthnews.com, from Dr. Wallach's appearance every time I go on coast to coast. We get tons of letters. And it's just so heartbreaking because it's unnecessary. 
I'm going to go over some of these letters just to show you how simple it is to reverse all chronic degenerative diseases and at the same time how problematic our health challenges are because nobody's telling us about this simplicity. We've got a guy on hold here. I want to get to, I want to get to uh, Eric in Texas and then we'll go over a couple letters. 844-236-6010 is our number. What's up, Eric? How you doing, man? Eric in hey, Texas. Hey. hey. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to get some advice on oh, my mom. Got diagnosed with FD. I, I, I need you to speak uh, up, bro. Can you speak up a little bit, Eric? Oh, sorry. No yeah. worries. I wanted to get, get some advice on my mom. She got diagnosed with FD okay. several years ago. Had okay. Had bad liver cirrhosis and is getting mastitis pretty bad. I, I need you to speak. Me. Eric, I'm sorry, man. I want to hear what you're saying. Yeah. I want everybody to hear what you're saying, but I need you to speak slowly and clearly because I'm having a hard time. I heard hep C and I heard cirrhosis, but speak into the phone and slowly. Okay, sorry. She's getting a uh, ascites pretty bad, getting drained every week now. Ascites for the listeners is swelling in the abdomen, secondary to liver problems. Okay, how old's your mom? She's 48. Okay, so we got hepatitis C, we've got cirrhosis, and we've got uh, the ascites of the, of the abdomen, which is when fluid starts to build up in the abdomen following liver disease. Is she an alcoholic or a drinker? No, she got it from a blood transfusion when she was okay. younger. Okay, so here's the deal. The letter after the word hepatitis doesn't matter. These are just silly medical, di me medical uh, distinctions, but they don't matter in terms of reversing the disease. She has hepatitis, period. Hepa means liver, itis means inflammation, okay? That means liver inflammation. That means the liver isn't doing its business, period. Cirrhosis is a breakdown in the liver cells. It involves fats that start to deposit. The liver gets messed up, period. Okay? Now, the liver is the most multifunctional organ in the body. It does an enormous amount of different things. It stores protein, amino acids, and, and sugars, and fats, and detoxifies. It's involved in digestion, and it's just a ridiculously important function. Ancient people, organ. Ancient people used to think uh, that the liver was actually the center of the body. That's how important the liver is. So here's the most important thing to understand about reversing hepatitis or any liver issue. And by the way, Eric, 100 million Americans, one out of three Americans have a liver problem. It's so, pr it's so common that doctors think it's normal, and they'll tell you it's normal. It isn't normal. So while your mom has a dramatic, uh, is having a dramatic uh, uh, problem with her liver, everybody's got it, or a lot of people, I should say, have some component or some aspect of liver disease, which makes perfect sense when you consider that the job the liver's doing involves digestion, okay? So that's the first thing you need to do when you have hepatitis is work with foods when you have any liver problem or you don't want a liver problem, okay? You with me, Eric? Yeah. Have, have your mom immediately do what's called a food diary where you write down everything you eat and then associate pro digestive health issues with specific foods and then eliminate the foods. Now, if she were to fast for 24 hours or do a Swero V cleanse, which is where you fast by using uh, a bottle of Swero, drinking half a bottle of Swero V every hour, six bottles every, in a 12 hour period, she'll notice relief just by fasting. She does need to obviously eat again, but when she starts eating again, she should be eating very carefully, paying close attention to how her body responds to specific foods, especially fatty foods. That's the first step. The second step is to start to use nutrition that supports the digestive system. Remember, the liver's a digestive organ, so to work with the liver, you gotta work on the digestive system. That means in addition to prob eliminating problem foods, get her on the BioLumin Nightly Essence, probiotics, have her eating fermented foods, miso, tempeh, kimchi, etc. Have her use digestive enzymes. The ultimate enzymes are a wonderful digestive enzyme. She wants super premium digestive enzymes. She can go to brightsidehealthproducts.com. When she's using digestive enzymes, have her make sure they contain lipase, L-I-P-A-S-E, and bile salts, that's B-I-L-E, bile salts. And it wouldn't hurt her to make sure that her digestive enzymes have something called betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E, in them as well. A little apple cider vinegar after meals can help too. There's an awesome amino acid called glutamine, G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, which can help with the liver. The B complex is stupendously important for liver health as well, as is vitamin C and as are essential fatty acids. I guarantee you her doctor hasn't talked to her about any of this stuff. So it's fasting, probiotics, digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar, uh, uh, the B complex, essential fatty acids, glutamine, and vitamin E. There's more, but that's a great start. 
Vitamin E, by the way, 400 international units a day. And then while you're at it, the selenium might help too. Ultimate selenium, 400 micrograms a day. And something called NAC or NAC can be very helpful for the liver. The second aspect is going to be blood sugar. Liver processes sugar, especially fructose, by the way, fruit sugar. So restricting, actually, in my opinion, Eric, your mom should have zero tolerance for anything that breaks down rapidly into sugar, and certainly straight sugar. Desserts, fruit juice, pasta, potatoes, bread, all the foods we love, burritos, rice, all the foods we love. Most of us can get away with a little bit of it, but for your mom, at the, when she has hepatitis, she should be staying completely away from those kinds of foods. Using nutrients that help her process sugar will help also. The sweeties made with chromium and vanadium can be important. All her electrolytes can be important. Potassium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, all of these are very important for liver health. And then last but most certainly not least, activating what we call here on the bright side the relaxation nervous system, the rest and digest nervous system, the healing nervous system, also called the parasympathetic nervous system, relaxing the body. The body heals when it's relaxed. It doesn't heal when it's stressed. It's as simple as that. And I know it sounds maybe to the uninitiated, to folks who haven't listened to this program, airy-fairy, but it's not. It's fundamental to good health. And that means, most importantly, practicing slow, deep breathing. I mean, sitting on the couch, 15 seconds, inhaling 15 seconds in through the nose, slowly. Most people can't even do 15 seconds, but start off at five seconds or six seconds or 10 seconds. And then again, slowly out through the nose, exhaling again 15 seconds. And it's always helpful to exhale more than you inhale because the exhale is actually where you activate the relaxation nervous system. So inhaling for 15 seconds and then exhaling for 16 or 17 seconds or inhaling for 10 and then exhaling for 15. So digestion, blood sugar, calm the body down, relax the body. These are all extremely important. And don't minimize the power of a good fast and also of these re relaxation techniques. I hope we helped you out, Eric. Thanks for your call, buddy. And God bless you and good luck. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, we'll get to, I'm going to read a couple of letters when we come back from our break. A couple of letters that I've, been get, that I've gotten off of uh, criticalhealthnews.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a, uh, a, we have empty, an empty board, a full board of empty calls, I guess you'd say. So I'm going to take some letters here, which I've been meaning to do for a long time. I've been getting tons of letters on criticalhealthnews.com from uh, Dr. Wallach's appearance. Every time Doc goes on, every time I go on, or Dr. Glidden goes on, we get bombarded with letters, and it's so tragic to me. Because while all these letters sound different, they're not really different, because health challenges really at their core all involve the same things. This is so important. If you're new listening to this program, please listen up. If you heard me say this before, it bears repeating. All diseases have the same, chronic degenerative diseases have the same problems underneath the symptoms. Whether the symptoms involve the eyes or the joints or the liver or whatever, the bones, the muscles, whether you have irritable bowel syndrome or COPD or multifocal corditis or uh, superativa, hydrogenitis superativa or any of the, these crazy medical diagnoses, underneath it all you will find inflammation slash immunity. You will find this attack defense mechanism. The body's attacked and it's defending itself. You will find a stress response behind everything. That means backtrack to where this stress response is being initiated, where the attack is coming from, what is causing the inflammation slash immunity. And you will always find A, digestive health issues, B, blood sugar issues, and three, an activated stress response, an activated adrenal system. Always, 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 always. Why is this important? Because it means that simply by backtracking to stabilizing the adrenal gland by calming the body down, to stabilizing the blood sugar by making sure you're not eating the stuff, sugar that is, and anything that breaks down to sugar, and by making sure you're using supplements that help you process sugar, and most importantly, stabilizing, working on digestive health, eliminating problem foods, and using nutrition and supplements that help support the digestive system. Now, I'm not talking about the spiritual and mental and emotional components yet, or I, at all, because 
as important as those are, this is a nutritional program. Yes, it's spiritual and mental and emotional aspects are critical. Maybe even more critical than the physical aspects. They may even precede physical maladies and physical degeneration. But as far as the physical aspects of health go, inflammation,